We all remember that 2013 Oxford University study, right? When it came out, it was everywhere. They said 47% of jobs in America were susceptible to be taken over by computerization. Now, although we have lived with this potential, really from the very moment the word robot was coined by Czech playwright Karel Kapak, that play, by the way, ended with a line, the robot was named Radius, and Radius said, the power of man has fallen. By gaining possessions of the factory, we have become masters of everything. The period of mankind has passed away. A new world has arisen. Mankind is no more. So since that moment, since we learned the word robot, the threat has been there. And now, so there are many questions about how do we coexist in a world of robots, artificial intelligence. Few have contemplated this more than Michio Kaku, and he's with us right now. Michio, you always talk about the golden age, right? You've talked about the golden age in the past. And is this a golden age? Should we look at this area we're going into now as an opportunity, as a golden age, or should we look at it with some skepticism? Well, think of the blacksmith. The blacksmith used to be the bedrock of every community, right? But what happened to the, uh, the blacksmith? The horse was replaced by the mechanical horse, the automobile, and the blacksmith became an automobile worker. So the key is not to fight progress, not to fight change, not to fight science. That's inevitable. You gotta roll with the punches. You gotta be able to adapt to it, educate people. And in fact, in the educational system, we have a regressive movement to dumb down the curriculum. That's the wrong strategy, because we have to uplift workers so they can adapt to robotics. They can adapt to this new technology and be part of it. And remember, workers that understand artificial intelligence and how to use it, they will thrive. Workers who do not will be out of a job. It's so interesting, because I was just reading an article where some schools are saying, okay, let's give this chat GBT a chance, where initially everyone was recoiling like, no, this is it, it's all over. But this Oxford study, which is almost, it was just 10 years old now, said that, you know, it's inevitable. At least half of us will lose our jobs. The big question, though, is will jobs replace those jobs? Well, I think uh, journalists are hyperventilating over the danger <laughs> of chatbots because their job... Yeah, I told you already. You get rid right. of teleprompter, right? I mean, I've been out of a gig a long time ago. Right. But the point is, journalists that use chatbots will thrive. Journalists that don't use chatbots will be out of a job. Arthur C. Clarke uh, said that robots would free up mankind, that we should be looking at a term called full unemployment as a beautiful thing, because we would not have to worry about drudgery or anything. We would be free to evolve our minds from, I guess we only do 5% of our brains, to maybe 10%. <laughs> But, I mean, is that really going to be good enough in a world where we're used to achieving things on our own? Well, this is purely hypothetical now. But take a look at uh, the fact that maybe 5% of homo sapiens would rather take drugs and just, you know, wallow in a, in a, in a, in a sanitarium. Right. A, a certain fraction of humanity may do that. But the rest of humanity want to strive. They want to struggle. They want to do something. Right. They want to be useful. Right. Otherwise, they feel like they're a parasite. So I think the bulk of society will thrive even when everything is automated, even when we have robotics everywhere. That's from the speech from that great Twilight Zone episode. Let's bring in the audience. We've got Nathan from Iowa with a question. Nathan. Hi, Charles. Pleasure to be here. Uh, you. Like you said, I'm from Iowa. I'm self-employed, uh, 22 years old. So kind of my general question is, how does a 22-year-old like myself prepare for the technological advances in the future? Um, I'm looking to take over a book of business for a financial advisor in town. Mm -hmm. So will that career and other careers be able to be around in the future? Me too. Well, there are three kinds of jobs that robots have a hard time replacing. The first is blue-collar jobs that are non-repetitive. Robots cannot hammer a nail. They cannot pick up garbage. They cannot fix a toilet. Robots are very, very bad at non-repetitive blue-collar work. Second, emotional jobs. Jobs involving rapport with a human being, being a professor, being a teacher, uh, being a counselor, being a, uh, a therapist, all that cannot be replaced by a robot. Third category is imagination. Mm -hmm. People that are innovative, that are leaders of society, that strategize, that dream about the future, those jobs cannot be replaced. So as long as you fit into one of these three categories, chances are you'll have a job for a long time. So this young man here, um, he, didn't, he didn't grow up you know, with the curriculum perhaps that you, you're describing we should be pushing, may, maybe at the earliest age possible. But now as he's entering the work age, 
he'll be able to use AI and all of these other tools to his advantage, right? That's right. In the same way that a worker uses a hammer, the hammer doesn't replace the human. The hammer augments the humans and gives them more power. And so we have to see technology not as a rival, but as something that we work with and can exploit because workers that use AI right. will thrive. Workers that don't will be unemployed. I, I read somewhere recently that 85% of the jobs over the next, let's say, 20 years haven't, been, haven't even been created yet. We don't even know what they are, but they're going to be all new jobs. You think that's true? Every revolution has new technologies that no one foresaw. The Industrial Revolution of the 1800s. Right. Who foresaw the coming of trains and factories right. and mass production? The Electric Revolution with radio and television. Who foresaw that? The current revolution with computers. And the next revolution is artificial intelligence, right. nanotechnology. So right. we don't foresee these things. But they'll be there. Me they'll too. be there. Thank you very, very much. Got to give them a hand. One of the most brilliant minds on the planet.